Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in Roku's channel store. We're in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing, and other sports news. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Yesterday, Deontay Wilder demolished Sergei Lakovic. I have a link to the video on my channel page. It's the day after the fight, August 10th, 2013. I encourage you to give it a look, but as you watch that video, understand that the video's inverted. In other words, whoever recorded that video has made it look, just through the recording process, like Deontay Wilder is a southpaw. He's not. He's an orthodox fighter. The punches he's landing, the hard punches, are right hands. Okay, now he destroyed Lukovic. Lukovic hits the canvas and actually twitches on the canvas, just like Fernando Montiel did against Nonito Denier. Right, the twitching implies that, quite frankly, Lukovic was completely unprepared for the punch that hit him. Whatever he was thinking, whatever next move his body was going to make, whatever his brain told his nerves to do, he obviously was not expecting to get dropped to the canvas. I thought the stoppage was a good stoppage. Now, I know the world is going to look at Deontay Wilder, who has a perfect record, has never gone the distance. He's 29-0 and 0 with no knockout, with no losses, right? All 29 wins are by knockout. I understand he's an Olympic bronze medalist. Here's why I remain a skeptic on Deontay Wilder, right? First, the level of competition. Understand the two most prominent names on Wilder's resume so far in his career, which has gone on for years, are Audley Harrison, right? And keep in mind, he fought Audley after Audley got destroyed in one round by David Price, right? Keep in mind, he fought Audley after Audley got destroyed very early by David Hay, right? So Audley Harrison and Sergei Lakovic. And understand, Lakovic had lost his last two fights, right? He got stopped by Brian Jennings in the ninth round. Understand, neither Harrison nor Lukovic should be considered to be in the prime of their careers. Neither Harrison nor Lukovic were on hot streaks, coming off big wins, right? I understand Harrison wasn't on a losing streak when he went into the fight against Deontay Wilder. But let's just say Harrison before then had had the lackluster performances, the knockout losses that I've previously referenced. Lakovich was actually on a losing streak when he went into his fight against Deontay Wilder. So as great as Wilder looked, you need to temper the enthusiasm by the level of competition, right? Let's go further. Understand that fighters, and I know it looks glamorous, who have never gone the distance, as impressive as that sounds, that could also be a hindrance, right? Because we don't know what to expect from Wilder when it's time for a gut check. And they're going to be those times. We just saw a fight a few weeks ago, Carl Froch against Mikael Kessler, where they got to the ninth round. Both of the guys are still in it, right? And then those ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth rounds, it was crucial that both guys keep their composure, both guys keep their focus, both guys suck it up, right? I believe that. 
you know, hardcore fans of boxing understand that in these fights, it's very important that your fighter have an opportunity, a chance to get a second wind, right? That's when you really see what fighters are made of. Stamina is key in fights. Think the Brandon Rios, Mike Alvarado fight, right? Those later rounds, Mike Alvarado had to stay the course. You understand the fighters are tired. They're both tired. You understand the fighters might be dinged, cuts, swelling, swollen eyes, sometimes closed eyes. We haven't seen Deontay Wilder in that situation. The jury's still out on how he handles that situation. In fact, it might shock some to know that not only has Wilder not gone the distance in a fight, did you know that Wilder has never had to even start the fifth round in a fight, right? So as good as Wilder looks in all of these highlights, understand all of these highlights are taking place within the first five rounds, right? In fact, within the first four rounds of a Wilder fight. His stamina is an open question. Let's talk about his offense. Now, there are a multitude of highlights with Wilder landing right hands, right? Go back and look at my videos on the wilder Audley harrison fight before the fight. I was talking about Wilder's right hand, right? Whether there was anything other than a right hand in Wilder's power punch arsenal. The jury's still out. What did he hit Lakovich with? A right hand, right? We haven't seen the kind of left hook that Vladimir Klitschko threw and dropped Eddie Chambers with or Ray Austin with, right? We haven't seen it. Folks, I'm just here to tell you that one punch is not enough at the championship level. Opponents are going to come in if all you have is a right hand from distance. An opponent is going to block that punch. They're going to be prepared for it. You have to have something else. Right here, he hits Lakovich with the same type of right hand that he hit Audley Harrison with. Right? And let's talk about that right hand. Right? Just split my face in two. Right? Let's say this is the left side of my face. I understand this image might be inverted. Wilder's a master at hitting you in the temple and the chin. Right? We haven't seen great Wilder knockouts off body punches. Right? Wilder is predominantly a headhunter, a one-handed headhunter, in my opinion. Right, It's a right hand up top. Now, you'd be surprised how many body punches a guy like Floyd Mayweather throws. You'd be shocked. Right, When I see a guy who's just a headhunter, even when that fighter has a lot of other great things going on. Ali. Vladimir Klitschko. But when I see a guy who's predominantly a headhunter, that's not a positive in my book. I prefer a full body attack. Consider me to be from the Sam Langford school of the sport. Right? You know, kill the body, the rest will follow. Right? Um, to me, Wilder is just a headhunter. He's getting away with it, quite frankly, because of the quality of his opposition right now, right? Now, let's talk about Wilder's defense, why I'm a skeptic as well. In fact, I mentioned Floyd earlier. Let's compare and contrast Wilder to Floyd Mayweather, right? Wilder is always trying to operate from the middle of the ring, always, right? He's not a guy 
who seems to have a part of his game where he can punish you with his back up against the ropes, right? In other words, the defense that Floyd Mayweather showed against Ricky Hatton and Miguel Cotto, where you have a dangerous offensive opponent and you're able to be with your back on the ropes, Victor Ortiz, you're able to be with your back on the ropes and you're still able to block the shots and to actually win the rounds. This is while you have your back up against the ropes, right? The Ali Ropadope against Foreman, back up against the ropes, and he's able to, against the knockout punching opponent, he's able to defend himself, cover not just his head, but also his body, and actually have enough offense to win rounds. By the way, I encourage people to go back and look at that Ali Foreman rumble in the jungle. I know the folklore is Ali's getting blown out, then he gets a knockout. The reality is Ali may have been winning that fight, right? Ali's winning many of those rounds while rope doping right? Because he's countering and stuff like that. Deontay Wilder isn't that guy. He doesn't have the level of defense to actually lean on the ropes and actually fight the kind of fight that Vitaly Klitschko fought against Derek Chisora. That's not who Wilder is. He has to be in the middle of the ring, right? Also, do we know whether Wilder can block body punches? It seems to me he's an athletic 6'7 guy who's able to use that athleticism to stay outside your punch range. Then he comes in throwing predominantly right hands, right? That's his game. We don't know if he can play chess if a guy gets up on him. We just don't know. What we do know is that his right hand is a great punch. We do know his right hand up top is one of the hardest punchers, uh, punches in the sport. He's one of the hardest punchers in the sport. He has to be on your short list of knockout threats. He has one punch knockout power. When guys hit the canvas against him, they're hurt. Sometimes, like Lukovic, they're twitching on the canvas. No question about it. But again, it's right-handed power. It's not two-handed power. He has a perfunctory jab with his left. But his left, to me, doesn't seem to be a power threat. And, of course, his defense, we don't know. It's just his legs. Who knows what happens when a guy gets up on him? Now, let me just say this. I know he's been calling out some names. Let me tell you a fight that would be interesting. And I know I picked against this boxer in his last fight. And this boxer lost the fight. Eddie Chambers. But Eddie Chambers went up against Vladimir Klitschko. Who, let's be clear here, has a better jab than Deontay Wilder. Right? Vladimir can control you for 12 rounds with that jab. Right? Vladimir Klitschko has... A great left hook. No question about it. Right? But Vladimir Klitschko, like Deontay Wilder, also has a great long right hand. Right? Vladimir Klitschko has one punch knockout power with that right hand. And understand, Eddie Chambers against Vladimir Klitschko was able to make it to the 12th round because even having a great long right hand is not enough at the elite level, right? Smaller Eddie Chambers was able to block that right hand for most of the fight. So what does Vladimir Klitschko do? He dusts off a great left hook that drops Chambers in the 12th round, I believe in the last minute of that fight. Understand, Chambers has the right hand blocked. 
Now, what if Eddie Chambers were to fight Deontay Wilder? Right? Eddie Chambers is a guy who, even though he got knocked out by Vladimir Klitschko, isn't prone to getting knocked out, particularly not early in fights. Right? You have to be a Vladimir Klitschko, and it has to be late in the fight. I believe an Eddie Chambers would diffuse Deontay Wilder's right hand. What does Wilder do next? You know, not only that, if, and this is typically what happens with young athletic guys who can use their feet for defense, if Wilder starts to tire and the distance between the two fighters starts to shorten and Eddie Chambers starts doing what Eddie Chambers does, fast counters. Let's remember his nickname is Fast Eddie Chambers. Right? If Eddie Chambers starts doing fast counters on Deontay Wilder, what's Wilder going to do next? Does Wilder have the game to handle a fast counterpuncher who's up on him? Right? I think these are questions that need to be asked. Think about it too. Kubrat Pulev, a guy who likes to hover who works behind an excellent jab. In other words, this is pull-up. He doesn't want to be up on you. He also doesn't want to be too far away from you. He wants to be about here, and he wants to hover around you, hitting you with a jab. Right? Now, Pulev is actually a chess player. What happens if Kubrat Pulev is fighting him? Blocks Wilder's right hand, right? If you don't block Wilder's right hand, you lose. Let's be clear. Right? That right hand's a bop. But if Pulev's blocking that right hand, and if Pulev is inside on him and is peppering him with jabs and counter punches, what's Deontay Wilder going to do? Dare I say it too, what happens if a fighter bum rushes him and forces him on his back foot? Can Wilder fight on his back foot? All I can say is when I think of Deontay Wilder, I think of a big question mark, right? It would be great if Wilder had fought a fighter within the area code of the top 10. It would be great if instead of me speculating on how he would do against Eddie Chambers or Kubrat Pulev, if Wilder had actually fought some of these guys, right? Chris Ariola, Bermain Stavern, uh, Tyson Fury, David Hay. Just remember that Deontay Wilder hasn't fought any of those guys. He's been brought along slowly, right? I know how Tyson Fury handles an opponent like Derek Chisora because Tyson Fury has fought Derek Chisora. Tyson Fury has, caught, has fought Kevin Johnson. Deontay Wilder hasn't, right? In fact, Deontay Wilder hasn't even made it into the fifth round. So view Deontay Wilder, as dramatic as yesterday's highlights are, as a raw, untested fighter. Right? Deontay Wilder KOing a guy with the right hand early in the fight, that's what happens practically all of the time. Right? At the championship level, you need to figure out how the fighter would do if plan A doesn't work. Right? Guys have to improvise. A Vladimir Klitschko decided, okay, Eddie, you have my right hand blocked. Here's my left hook. Right? What's Wilder's plan B? Right? What happens when Wilder's not in the middle of the ring, but when Wilder's on the side of the ring? Understand, even heavy punchers like David Hay occasionally find themselves with their back up against the ropes. Folks, it happens. Hasn't yet happened to Wilder in a big moment in a fight yet. He's 29-0, and 0, but none of these fights are against elite competition. None of these fights have made it into the fifth round. As you go forward, impressed by Wilder, just have a bit of skepticism, especially if he fights a guy, let's say like Eddie Chambers, who has a track record of blocking right hands. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. 
visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. I don't mean to be too hard on Wilder. I congratulate Wilder. He's certainly a name that needs to be mentioned in the heavyweight mix, and he certainly has the punching power and the size and the athleticism. My concern is the skill level. I just don't know. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.